Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm here with uh, Premier Doug Ford, Mayor Graydon Smith, and Muskoka District Chair John Plink to make an exciting announcement on behalf of the Honourable Kinga Surma, Minister of Infrastructure. First of all, I must say it is a pleasure to see all of you in person instead of on my computer screen, and I look forward to more of these events, in-person events, this summer. Everyone here in Bracebridge knows that both the local arena and library are old and outdated. I remember attending the 100th anniversary of the library in 2008, and much as it is a beautiful Carnegie Library, we all know that libraries have changed a lot in the past century. And let's be honest, the arena was old when I was coaching my kids' hockey teams, and that was a few years ago. For about eight years, the town and district have been working on a plan to replace these important community facilities. I know Mayor Smith and the town council have been bringing up this up at meetings with the province at many municipal conferences. Today, we are seeing the results of that planning behind us, with the property being prepared for construction to start this fall. I'm pleased to announce that Ontario is investing to support the construction of the Bracebridge Multi-Use Community Centre. Thank you. This new community centre will replace Bracebridge's arena and library with a new accessible and integrated recreational facility for all residents to enjoy. The multi-use community centre will include a 1,000 seat arena, a modern public library, a community hall, an accessible indoor multi-use field house with a double gymnasium and walking track and ample on-site parking. Surrounding the community centre will be outdoor play spaces and beautiful trails. While the town of Bracebridge is funding the arena, the provincial funding will allow all the other parts of the facility, including the library and field house, to go ahead now as well. I think this is a great design that will make it much easier for parents who have to juggle their children's activities. One child can be at skating lessons or hockey practice, while another is doing their homework in the library, all in one place. By investing in local projects here in Bracebridge and across the province, Ontario is helping to create stronger and healthier communities, create jobs, and contribute to our province's economic recovery and growth. I'm pleased that residents of Bracebridge will benefit from this investment for years to come. And I personally am looking forward to playing hockey in the new arena. I'd like to thank Mayor Smith and Chair Tlink for their efforts to bring this important project to life for the people of Bracebridge. Thank you, and it's now my honour to welcome Premier Ford to Muskoka and to the platform here. Premier Ford. Well, it's great to be up in Muskoka, and it's great to be here in Bracebridge, and, and thank you so much, Norm, for that introduction. Anyone who lives around here knows that the champion MPP, Norm Miller, is for the people in Perry Sound, uh, Muskoka. His family's been working on your behalf for decades, and you won't find anyone more committed to this area. That's why it's such an honour for me to be here with him to announce an investment of $16 million into a building, a new multi-purpose community centre. And I've always, uh, right, right, it's actually right in the heart of Bracebridge, I've always said community centres are absolutely critical in every single uh, area throughout this province. It brings people together. And there's a couple other champions i got to mention. Uh, my good friend, uh, Mayor Smith, I have to tell you, and, and, and Norm knows this, uh, Mayor, I think you called me every single week, uh, all the, <laughs> literally every single week, to find out what was going on. So he, he was pushing it, but that, you know, you're doing your job when you call me every single week. Along with the District uh, Muskoka Chair, uh, John Clink, and, and Chair, uh, you're, you're right behind it and uh, doing a great job as well for the, uh, the whole area and the District Council as well. This has been a true Team Ontario effort and it will benefit the people of Bracebridge for decades to come, bringing vital infrastructure projects like this into hard-working Ontario communities is a priority for this government. And we know that community centres are the heart and soul of towns like Bracebridge. And you heard Norm talk about the story about uh, playing hockey. I can uh, promise you, as soon as we get this arena built, this old guy here is going to slap on the skates and we're going to go for a little... Uh, skate around. What it does, it brings people together for recreational activities, events, and, and learning opportunities. And I know that coming together as a community has been sorely missed for the past 15 months. But standing here today, I can say that the light at the end of the tunnel is brighter than ever before. 
As we proceed on Wednesday into step two of the provincial reopening, our frontline heroes deserve all the credit. And so, so I just want to mention another shout out to our frontline uh, heroes in the town of Bracebridge and especially the uh, Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit for all your efforts throughout uh, this COVID-19. And folks, I, I got to tell you, they, they sent me a text the other day and the, the, the people of Ontario get all the credit, the frontline healthcare heroes. They sent me a, a message that we did 250,000 and it seems like a common number now, but you just think of 250,000, that's one quarter of the entire US in one day. So 330 million versus 15 million, it just shows what champions we have here in Ontario and we wouldn't be here without each and every one of them. And we're truly, truly grateful for everything you've done. I wanna thank you. God bless Ontario and the people here. They're absolutely incredible. So now I'm gonna send it to the mayor of all mayors, the champs of all champs, Graydon Smith. Thank you. Well, Premier, to be fair, I think I gave you a couple of weeks off uh, from my calls over Christmas and New Year's. But uh, to Premier Ford and our distinguished guests today, MPP Miller, District Chair Clink, I welcome you all to Bracebridge on behalf of council, staff, and most importantly, the citizens of Bracebridge and the communities throughout Muskoka. I share our collective excitement for today's announcement that will chart a new, better path for recreation, learning, and culture in Bracebridge and Muskoka for decades to come. The near $17 million of funding announced today allows for the dreams of many to be realized. We are already on the path of replacing our 70-year-old arena, but our community needed more. It needed a new library, a modern, accessible, state-of-the-art facility to replace 110 years of wonderful history at our current location. While beautiful, it's become weary and unable to keep up with the growth and demands of our modern town. The community needed a space that can be used for sports year round, that can be accessed by soccer players, baseball players, our tennis club, lawn bowling, basketball, pickleball, and when it's not being used for that, can transform into event space, allowing for more things to take place right here in Bracebridge. This funding allows for those dreams to be fulfilled, allows us to proceed with what was always our plan A, to build these facilities together all at once so they could become a multi-generational hub of activity and services all under one roof. A thousand seat arena, a modern public library, an indoor multi-sport field house, community auditorium, outdoor play areas and trails, and someday even another ice surface when the need and time is right. We were on a path to some of it, not knowing when we would get a chance to have all of it. Thank you again to the Premier and the province for their generosity and recognition that this project is a game changer. We would not be here today if it were not for the incredible hard work of a lot of people over a very long period of time. Our first meeting started taking place just after I was elected mayor over 10 years ago, and we worked together as a community to dream, discuss, and design. Thank you to all who've contributed to what begins today. Thank you to our steering committee, Councillor Chris Wilson, Councillor Mark Quemby, Councillor Archie Bowie, Library Board Chair Barb Hutchinson, Library CEO Catherine Rodney, Director of Finance Paul Judson, and a very special thank you to two people that have led this project on the staff and in, uh, tirelessly, our Director of Recreation Cindy O'Regan, who may have woke up with a smile on her face today for the first time in a long time, and CEO Stephen Reddy, who may have slept last night for the first time in a long time. I also want to recognize and thank our former CAO, John Sisson, who retired last year and for more than a decade guided town staff and this project through a lot of stages. Thanks also to our amazing external team at MJMA Architects, Collier's Project Leaders and their associate firms, and to all those that have served on the library board, library and town staff, and various stakeholder groups over the past decade. Lastly, to Cindy and Molly Goble, whose incredibly generous donation of these 20 acres is allowing this project to take place in the urban core of our town. I'm forever grateful to you for this generous gift. As you can see, we've got equipment ready to get added here today from Fowler Construction, an amazing local company that will be doing the site work, putting locals to work right here to kick this project off. And you should know that not only did they come in with the price under budget to do that work, but also with a $250,000 donation towards construction. Thank you, Larry and John, for your incredible support. 
We've got a lot more fantastic support announcements coming in the very near future. Stay tuned. There's more good news on the way. But today, thanks, Premier Ford. Thanks, members of the provincial government, for your incredible support for Bracebridge and for Muskoka. And now I'd like to introduce District Chair John Clink. Well, good afternoon, uh, everyone. And uh, following those uh, three distinguished gentlemen makes my task very easy. Uh, but I, uh, um, in addition to welcoming uh, the Premier once again to Muskoka, uh, on behalf of my colleagues at Muskoka District Council, uh, always a pleasure, Premier, to have you with us. And uh, Premier, it has undoubtedly been a difficult 15 months for all of us. And uh, I feel compelled uh, to thank you uh, and your colleagues and your staff throughout the province of Ontario for your leadership and, and uh, the tremendous work that you have done uh, on behalf of all Ontarians and Canadians um, in this pandemic. Um, you know, uh, the Premier is an exceptionally busy man and uh, uh, for him to find the time uh, to join us here in Muskoka to make this announcement on behalf of the town of Bracebridge uh, to me is very special and and I know it's very personally uh, special to the mayor and his council so premier uh, thank you very much for attending uh, and Mr. Miller thank you as well uh, for all that you have done in the uh, the work towards this announcement today I just uh, I feel compelled to uh, uh, to offer my congratulations to the town of Bracebridge uh, to uh, to you Mayor Smith uh, and your councils uh, this has been a project uh, that you've been working so very hard with your staff on for all of my time as the district chairman and and I compliment you uh, on not only uh, what you have arrived at but the process you've undertaken to ensure that community played a role a significant role in the uh, the thought process behind uh, what will be built behind us so congratulations to you your worship and uh, and your community and finally, on behalf of uh, uh, not only my colleagues at District Council, District Staff, but also the greater community of Muskoka, um, I just want to uh, thank the province um, and the town of Bracebridge for creating another amenity that will benefit not only the citizens of Bracebridge, but all of the residents of Muskoka and indeed visitors from throughout Ontario. And, you know, we're such an integrated community and the success of Port Severn or Port Carling, Bracebridge, Gravenhurst, Huntsville, Port Sydney uh, is critical um, to their neighbours and uh, the amenities that will be offered here will benefit the broader community and uh, it will help in terms of the employment opportunities that the Mayor have, has mentioned but also the recreational amenities, visitation and the recovery, uh, Mr. Premier, from, uh, from the pandemic. So once again, thank you, sir, uh, for attending. Uh, thank you for your government support. And I would be remiss if I didn't conclude with beyond the thanks for your work in the pandemic, I have to say that we should all take note of the fact that virtually all of the business, certainly of the District of Muskoka, which I'm most familiar with, has not lost a beat uh, throughout the pandemic. And that is a tribute to not only the funding that's been provided to municipalities across Ontario, but also the resources, Mr. Premier, that you've provided uh, to all municipalities across Ontario. And for that, on behalf of all of our citizens, we're exceptionally grateful. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Oh, thank you so much, Chair. Okay. We'll, we'll take questions from the media, one by one, from the microphone. Each person will get one question, one follow-up, please. And we'll start with James from your TV. Thank you. Hi, Premier. Hi, James. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. First of all, thanks very much for this. I know we were a little disappointed when we didn't get the federal provincial funding, and so it's very yeah. exciting this community is now getting the funding it needs. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, I want to just go away from this for a second, Premier, sure. and talk about Canada Day. There's been a lot of calls, uh, especially from Wata Mohawk Territory, to uh, not have any fireworks, not have major Canada Day celebrations. Our, our Prime Minister as well is, is moving in that direction. What are your thoughts on this? 
Well, I think it's time for Ontarians to reflect on, on uh, what has happened to the First Nations communities in, in the past for, uh, you know, decades and decades. And it's, it's an absolute tragedy. Our heart breaks for their communities. Uh, the province, I, I under, you know, I, I get it. That's not our jurisdiction, but we're there to support them. We're there to support them with any resources, anything they need. I've talked to uh, numerous chiefs around the province and uh, we'll be there for them. I know we put out $10 million, uh, but we're going to be there to uh, support them any way we can. And I just ask Ontarians to reflect over uh, Canada Day on uh, what has taken place. And I just want uh, everyone in the First Nations community right across Ontario and Canada to know that we have their backs. And just as a follow-up, uh, in terms of COVID-19, we're moving into stage two this Wednesday. Um, Simcoe Muskoka has been named a, a Delta variant hot zone, but we're not, we're, we haven't seen any more than 10 cases a day in this last week. How, yeah. how close are we to maybe moving into stage three a little bit earlier than expected? Well, that's a great question. I was just speaking to Dr. Gardner, and uh, what we're seeing, the Delta variant is, is closer to the Barrie uh, region, and it is such a, a, a massive uh, jurisdiction. And I, I think uh, when we get through this, we may have to split that up to reduce it because it's really not fair to the people of Perry Sound and, and uh, Bracebridge, Huntsville region, uh, what happens an uh, hour and a bit away. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll get uh, things moving as soon as possible. Uh, there's no one that wants to open this province up more than I do. We're very, very close. We'll be sitting down with the new uh, Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Moore, and uh, we'll get his advice. and. If he gives us the green light, let, let's get this province open and start moving. I, I can't wait. I really can. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Moose FM. Hi, how you doing? I'm good. I'm your good. Producer, Matthew Rice from Moose FM. Hey, Matthew. I um, just like, wanted to follow up on my colleague James' question. Uh, I know uh, it's likely you might not have a direct answer for this, considering there's a new medical officer coming into. but. Uh, how quickly do you expect those talks to go on uh, between separating Simcoe Muskoka? I know that from reporting on this locally extensively, it's been an ongoing conversation. It's ongoing. So how Absolutely. quickly do you expect that well, conversation to change with the new medical officer? Yeah, I, I, I think we have to get through this pandemic, to be very frank with you. We'll do a review. But again, it's just a, such a large uh, region, and it's, put it bluntly, it's unfair to other parts of this region. It's not fair, you know. Do you know how many times I got a call from Mayor Huntsville and Bracebridge and Perry Sound, and, and I know Norm voiced his opinion numerous times. Doug Downey, our Attorney General, uh, Jill Dunlop, all the representatives up here. Uh, it's 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 not fair. So we're we're gonna get through this pandemic, then we're gonna have a good chat and may have to redraw the the boundaries because you can't, <laughs> you know, we're we're almost an hour away. If you go to the far part of Huntsville. And uh, or by Perry Sound, and then all the way to Bracebridge, there's a big, big distance, a big gap there. So uh, we're we're going to jump on this. And speaking about the multi-use community center, I know previously yes. the province there was uh, mis uh, the province didn't fund this project initially, but we've now circled back thanks as you as you spoke to about constant calls from Mayor Smith about this. Yes. What led to the decision to go back and to provide the $60 million in funding? Well, there's a certain pot, and it goes right across Ontario, you know, and they, they have X amount of dollars. We had tenfold, ten times more asks, and uh, we, we just had to uh, run through it. And really, uh, I give uh, all, all the credit to the, these three gentlemen back here. It's persistence. I know Norm was fighting for it, the chair, and, and especially Graydon. And, you know, I was joking around, but I'm serious. He'd call me every single week. He'd call the treasurer. He'd call the finance minister. He'd call anyone that wanted to listen to him. And uh, and rightfully so. And uh, I'm proud that he's representing the people of Bracebridge. And the people of Bracebridge, man, they have a loud voice at, uh, down at Queen's Park. It can't, can't be ignored because, as, as the chair said, th th this facility is not just going to be for the people of Bracebridge. It's for the whole region that people are going to come here and, and uh, just enjoy it. So it's just a fabulous uh, community centers have always said. I came from uh, council from, you know, I walked a mile in, in their shoes, as I always say. Nothing's more important than community centers, community hubs that people can gather for all different reasons. And uh, that's where towns come together at their local uh, community center, community hub. So thank you. I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Next is Country 102. 
How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, Doug, you love Muskoka. I do. And you've been here uh, last year with a lot of money for the Muskoka Brewery. We do. Brace, Bracebridge really benefits from your visits. Yes. Uh, can you tell us uh, about what kind of uh, things went into deciding for this project as opposed to others? Like why there was a decision for this one as opposed to other projects at this time? Well, we, we try to split it equally all across the province and jurisdictions that need it. One, one stood out was the arena was, I think, the one of the oldest, if not the oldest, in the entire province. What was it, uh, Graydon, 70 years? or more, more than 70 years. Yeah, more than 70 years. So, you know, after 70 years and, and many governments prior to us uh, ignoring this region, we aren't, we aren't about to ignore the, the great people in the uh, Perry Sound Muskoka area. We want to be there to support them. And I know we did some great work in, in Perry Sound up by the airport as, as well, that uh, Norm was a big advocate of, of that. So um, th this is a, a really uh, you know booming area. Everyone's getting uh, out of Dodge, per se. After this pandemic, we're putting broadband right across the province. That's I always say if there's an infrastructure project and everything's important, the roads, the bridges, the highways are important, nothing is more important than broadband, nothing. So we're, we're putting a ton of money, I think it's well over $4 billion, to make sure everyone has high-speed internet right across the, the province, even in the far rural uh, northern communities will have it, uh, and that's going to happen real, real quick. I know Minister Surma is working on it uh, as we speak, and that, that's why she's not here today. She's working on this uh, broadband project. And more people are just moving up to the cottages and, and making it their home now. They don't want to be stuck in a busy city. And who wouldn't want to come up to God's country here? It's, it's beautiful, stunning. And be able to work from home, I think that's the way of the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next is City TV. Hey, Prim Jamie. Hey, Mr. Premier. Nice drive up here, wasn't it? Yeah, it was beautiful. Um, what I'm asking is, why isn't the economy open? When we look at the numbers and how low they are, and they're consistently lo yeah. low now, in s that matches with September, the numbers. Mm -hmm. In September, we had restaurants open. September, yeah. people can go to for a, a lunch here in Bracebridge. Why can't we do it now? Because what's different with the science table? Yeah. So again, with the science table and the health table, Jamie, I, I just have to get advice from the, the docs. You know, I, I want to get things open as quickly as possible. I think it's going to come sooner than later. The numbers drop again. Um, and and we, we need to get the economy boom. The only, you know, the only few things that aren't open are, uh, you know, the indoor uh, dining, which is, is going to happen. Um, and uh, re really, uh, outside of the casinos and and strip joints. They're the only three things that aren't open now. <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you, there everything else seems to be moving forward, but again, we have to be cautious about the Delta variant and uh, and the gyms. The gyms, my heart breaks for the people. We gotta get those uh, gyms open. Folks, just bear with us for a very short period. It's gonna happen. I have to follow the, the direction of the chief medical officer. Every, Jamie, everyone has this perception. I'm the premier, I get to snap my fingers and get it done. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, yes, yes, do we work together as a team? Do, do I have a big, big say in it? 100%. But I also believe in surrounding myself with medical professionals throughout this whole pandemic and uh, I'm listening to the, the doctor's uh, advice. One thing that isn't open is uh, hair salons. Um, yeah, Wednesday. But I'm looking at, when you look at the uh, number of vaccines out there, like 70% of the people are single vaxxed, almost 30% now yep. are double vaxxed. That wasn't a factor in September, but businesses were open September. Businesses aren't open now, whether it's yep. any one of them. It's, it, it just, I agree with you. People you, are having a tough you know, time rounding that. You know, pay. Jamie, I agree with you. I'm a business person. I'm, I'm balancing the economy between health care. Without the health, we don't have an economy. Uh, again, folks, there's no one that wants to open this economy up more than I do. I think we're we're pretty well 90% there, but it's not uh, good enough in my opinion. So just hang in there. We'll be talking to the chief medical officer, and I am going to do everything we can safely. I want to repeat safely, open things up. It's uh, it's absolutely critical. And this is our last question from yes. Muskoka today. How you doing? Good, good to see you. Welcome here. Yeah. Um, I'd like to double back to the uh, uh, local issue. Yes. Um, you're a seasonal resident in uh, Port Sydney. Yep. And I guess you heard about the tragic news uh, yesterday. Tragedy. And I just wonder, is there anything that the province can do to help the municipalities, specifically Huntsville and or Muskoka, to, for that site, obviously you know the site, 
very, I've, I've been down it. Yeah. So the folks, uh, what, what we're describing is there's some falls in Port Sydney, and you can go there on a beautiful day, and there's hundreds of people. My kids have gone down these falls. If you're going, please wear, wear a life jacket. Every, if, am I not wrong, but almost every year someone dies there? Almost every single year someone dies and drowns there. Um, you know, the only thing is, I'm, I'm thinking of having a lifeguard. If it's that busy, because I live down the street, and I'm not exaggerating, when I, when I say upwards to 100 people on those rocks there, and they're going down these, these falls, and at the end of it, there's a whirlpool, and it kind of will suck you down to a certain degree, and you can't, you can't get out. So anyone that's not wearing a life jacket, you're taking your, uh, your life in, in your hands, and it's, it's heartbreaking. So wear a life jacket. Uh, you know, I wouldn't even mind pitching in for a lifeguard. If I, you know, if, for whatever it cost, uh, a few thousand dollars throughout the summer, I'd, I'd be funding, uh, I think it's still a town of Huntsville. You guys are right in the middle, Bracebridge and Huntsville. But even the town of Muskoka to put a lifeguard there. It's dangerous, and people don't realize how dangerous and how strong that current is. But it's just heartbreaking to lose two two young people for for what? Because they didn't you know. It was, it was terrible. You didn't know them, did you? No, no, no. But it's a shame because the people come from all over the place, and they don't realize how powerful that is. You you go down there, you go down on your butt, and then you hit those uh, that whirlpool at the end. It's it's hard to get out. And I, I used to tell my kids, you aren't going there without a life jacket and I was always there with them but there, it was all, always made me nervous every time I go yeah so just quickly a, a year from now there's an election there mm -hmm. and uh, you're hoping that the economy can pick up and pay for all these uh, promises that you're making in the next year is that uh, fair I mean is that believable understandable yeah well I, I took an approach when when I got elected last time we were in a financial mess we were the largest uh, debt in the entire world or hydro costs were the highest in North America and everyone said raise taxes and I take a different approach get the economy economy booming so when we took office we had lost 300,000 jobs we took office and within about 14 to 16 months we created the environment because government doesn't create jobs it'd be a nightmare if we created jobs we created the environment for companies to thrive and prosper and grow we created 307,000 new jobs, and those 307,000 people, rather than taking from the government, they were giving to the government. We ended up with a $2 billion surplus. Our economy is going to be on fire, folks. I'm, I'm predicting, and this is a tough prediction, we're going to have a 6% growth, which is massive. Even I think it might even be higher. The biggest problem we had right before the pandemic, we were short 250,000 people to fill the jobs and uh, we're going to be in the same position. We're an economic powerhouse in North America, uh, and I give all the credit to the, the people here. It's not the government. The government doesn't create jobs. We'll create an environment for companies to come in from all over the world, and uh, our minister, uh, Vic Fidelli, sends me an update every single day uh, about new companies. And it, we're just on fire with new companies coming in, especially in the tech industry as well. Uh, we're, we're the most diverse uh, jurisdiction anywhere in North America when it comes to uh, the largest mining, forestry, artificial intelligence, tech, automotive, agriculture, manufacturing. Uh, I could go on and on and on. There's no region in North America that can compete against us. And the talent that we have coming out of the colleges and universities, that's, our, that's my number one selling feature. When I go out and around and I talk to these CEOs of corporations, I said you will never find a talent pool like you will in Ontario and the quality of life. Uh, quality of life, you can't beat it. Folks, come to Ontario, open up a business, we're there to support you, and uh, we're, we're the best anywhere in the world, Ontario, anywhere. I'm convinced of it. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. Thanks.